From helping us monitor the spread of diseases to understanding the impact of climate change, machine learning models are used in a variety of applications that impact our lives. So what are developers doing to ensure that their models are used ethically? And how do these applications get made? What is the life cycle of an AI project? The typical AI project has six stages. It starts with defining the problem, then we move on to a phase where we collect data and prepare the data, then we do a training of a model, we test it, we evaluate it, and eventually we want to explain the model. So sometimes you have the same person completing every part of the project, and at other times we have a different person doing one part, handing it over to another person at the other part. And we don't just do them one after the other, we can do things in parallel, we can go back and redo them, we can revisit them and just continuously refine. How do we define the problem? Defining the problem starts with identifying a need for a data-driven application. So this can sometimes come from an external partner who wants our help, but it can also come from our team that's constantly researching and looking for new ways that AI machine learning can help benefit people in our societies. The important things we need to know are who are we trying to help? Why are we creating a machine learning model? Is it actually the suitable and appropriate way of addressing the problem? What data is available or that we will need to collect? Is there anything that needs to be done to the data before we use it in a project? Yes, the success of a machine learning application depends on the data that is used to develop a model. The main thing we need to do after we have collected the data is to clean it. So this involves removing any duplicates, if there are any, finding errors, reviewing whether there is enough representative data um, to have been collected, sometimes even reducing the size of the data itself, if not all of it is relevant to the problem of hand or we don't have permissions to use that kind of data. So uh, for example, we might want to create a machine learning model that uses environmental data to predict either rainfall in the future. The, this is a problem that's called now casting. We collect data across an entire country, but this data can sometimes have lots of imperfections. One of the common things in radar data are flocks of birds which are flying across, and the radar data will pick up these birds. And what we we'll want to do is remove those birds using some methods, remove any other errors in the radar itself, and then we'll end up with a clean data set that we can use to do our modeling. So once we have the data, the next stage is to train it, right? Yes, exactly. We'll first need to decide which type of model to use. But once we've made that decision, we'll use the clean data to develop our model. How long do you spend on testing? Testing takes a really long time. It's probably the most important part of any machine learning model because we want to make sure that our models are as, as accurate and as useful as they can be. So if an expert meteorologist is going to use our model to help in their research or in their everyday work, it's vital that they can trust the model to make accurate predictions that might inform, of course, their scientific research. So robust testing is really, really important. What does it mean to evaluate a model? Evaluating a model is when we look back over everything we have done so far and check that we addressed the problem we intended to address with enough accuracy to be useful. It also involves reviewing our process to make sure that we have kept to our ethical standards. How do you then explain a model? When we make a model, we want it to be used either by our own teams or by external partners like climate researchers or meteorologists or other experts. To help them understand the model and how it was created, we will create a document that explains all the decisions we made while we were developing the model, as well as some technical information about the accuracy and the confidence that we have in its prediction. Here at DeepMind, we use something called a model card to make sure that users have all the information they need when deciding uh, to use any model that we produce. So there are many stages involved in creating an AI application, and each step requires skilled, diverse groups of people that help to improve the accuracy and ethical impact of these applications used all around the world.